Did you know that the average quilter buys 100 yards of fabric each year? Well, their first choice is 100% cotton and one third prefer prints in pastels. You know, actually, I think I buy more than 100 yards. How about you? Well, Mr. Bannerdet from Bannertex Fabrics suggested I design a romantic floral line for his company, and I just kept declining. I said, I don't know a thing about designing fabric. But in 1997, I headed off to New York for my first line, Anniversary Florals, to celebrate my 20th anniversary. Well, my sister Patty went along to help. This is Patty, me, with Mr. B. And this is his artist, Esther, and Anna, and her assistant. Well, our starting point was this painting, which Bannertex had purchased the right to use. Now, many fabric lines are reproduced from fabrics in old quilts, but my lines always start as a painting. Now, from this painting, these are the colorways that we developed along with the artist. You can see how this first piece looks almost like the painting. And then we did a yellow-blue line, a purple-green, and a pink-blue, all from that one painting. And then we worked with scales. We actually enlarged and reduced. From this one flower right here, we created this small scale print, something look, that looks like this. And then see these flowers right here? This is where this piece came from in all the different colorways. So value is also important. So we played and we changed with the colors of the fabrics on a photocopier. And this is what we came up with, different values, different scales. And so it went, until we had paintings ready for strike-offs of printed fabric. Now, the first yards arrived to me on long rolls, so I can just sew up samples for my new books. It's just so much fun. Well, to commemorate my 25th anniversary, I bring you Fabric Gal, sewn up in my second line, Rainbow Florals. Now, once again, the signature piece in the border is the large-scale floral. And then in the block, there's four different medium and small-scale prints, different values. It's just so much fun, you make two blocks at a time. Now, Loretta Smith made this one, and Laura McCauley made the same pattern, only with a dark background. You know, even some of the fabrics are the same, but the look is entirely different. And Lori finished it off with a scallop border, just so pretty. So join me. I can't wait to stroke more fabric. Teresa made this 16 block wall hanging for my sister Patricia and it's just so pretty. Well, when all the blocks are set together, the identical patches make little hourglasses throughout the quilt. And then Teresa framed it with the background fabric and finished it off with that large scale floral, my signature print. Now the machine quilting is easy to do. You just need to do diagonal, stitch in the ditch lines and you can do it with your walking foot. Well, Linda Parker put together such cute little short bolts. Short bolts of all the different colors in the quilt. She put the pink, the green, the blue, and the yellow. Looks so cute in those short bolts, but I want long bolts. I want big bolts, big hunks of fabric, because I'm fabric gal. Can't do it with little pieces. Well, this is the block itself. It is eight inches square in finished size. And you can see each one of the four colors. For each one, you need to have a medium and a dark. The medium and the dark of the yellow and the pink. The same thing with the blue and then the green. Now, the strips are easy because every medium color is two and a half inches and every dark color is three and a half inches. Easy to remember. And for each for a quilt this size, you just need to have one strip 
of each one of them for the whole quilt. It's easy. And as I was selecting my fabrics, I tried to put a little blue, a little yellow, a little pink in each one of the pieces so that they all play back and forth with each other. And there is a number of prints that are just this small fern that actually reads solid from a distance. And then this one has all of the colors in it again. So it all ties together and you only need to have one background fabric. Well, let's just start with the strips. This is the two and a half inch strip. It is salvage to salvage, but I really prefer half strips. So you can just go ahead, cut it on the fold, and so much easier to sew and to press. But if you cut your strips in half, that means that you can go ahead and use fat quarters. And there is nothing better than a quilt that uses up your fat quarters. Okay, let's just take these two pieces like this and take the medium, which is the more narrow of the one of the two, place them right sides together, use that quarter inch seam, 15 stitches to the inch. Oh, it's the same old thing in quilting. You get that quarter inch straight and you are home free. Okay, right sides together, just pedal right down along there. Um, I really love this little rosebud print. It's just such a cute print. It reminds me of the rosebud prints that we would see in the Sears catalog in the 1950s. Oh, my sisters and I would get quite excited when it arrived. We would just pour over it for hours, for days. You know, my mom made all of our clothes. So we quite often ordered our fabrics from Sears. Oh, 49 cents a yard. Can you beat that in all different colors? And then I remember in the 1970s, VIP came out with a little rosebud print. Loved it in pinks and purples, and I had it in reds. And then in the 1980s, oh, a fabric revolution again. Concord came out with micro dots. And I think maybe 50 different colors. I tried to get every single one of them. I actually made a quilt out of all micro dots, but by themselves, they're a little boring. You need to put some prints with them. Okay, drop the strips down with the dark on the top, set that seam, and then just open and press right into that strip. Now you're gonna repeat this step in all four of your colors, one strip, of uh, each one of the four colors will make all 16 blocks. Well, what's really fun about this quilt is that this patch I'm about to show you makes two patches at the same time. Revolutionary. Okay, cut these apart and take this set and place the two and a half inch strip across the top and take the second set and place the three and a half inch strip across the top so that they're actually alternating. And this is the best part. When you roll them back, you'll see there is no matching to do. Now, how can you go wrong there? Okay, I've got those seams, those two strips laid out. I like to cut with this ruler. They are cut into two and a half inch sections right now. So just take the uh, ruler. I have to line that up a little better. It's not quite perfect. Okay, line up the zero right along here, and I'm gonna put my cutter right here at zero and straighten off that left edge. And then I put tape every two and a half inches, so all I have to do is drop my cutter where the tape is, and you can just whip right across there. It's wide enough to just about cut a full strip. There's one little piece that I'm gonna move the cutter and get that one cut. Got my two and a half inch pairs. Take this piece, get rid of it. And you just stack them up. You get them all ready for assembly line sewing. That is gonna go quick. Okay, grab up the first set. And there is a seam underneath. But that seam is going down, so you don't have to fight it. This seam right here is going up. So just hold it with your stiletto and Hold it tight, zip right across there, and keep on going with all of your patches. But let's take a look at this one. Always in a hurry. No mats, that's good. That's how you wanted it. But take this patch right now and match this edge right here. 
and right here at the fold, take your scissors and cut right to the stitches. Now from this side, we're going to just put it right side up and press into the two and a half inch section. And then turn it around, press into the other two and a half inch section so that when you turn it over on the wrong side, right where you clipped it, those seams go in opposite directions. It's going perfect. Now, I want to do a little marking on this patch. And it's very easy to mark if you take this sandpaper mat and mark on it. So place your patch so that it's tall side up. And take a six and a half inch ruler with a diagonal line on it. The most important part is the diagonal line, the 45 degree line. And line up that 45 degree line along the side. Put the tip of the ruler right here and put the edge of the ruler right on your stitches. Perfect. And with a permanent marking pen, just draw a line. Let me hold that tight and I'll draw across here and here. That's what the line looks like. Okay, let's just turn the mat and with the ruler, repeat that same line. 45 along the side, the long side, Tip of the ruler here to edge of the ruler right on those stitches. And just mark again. Now these are your stitching lines. Oh, you are not going to cut on these. These are your stitching lines. Now the size of this patch should be approximately four and a half inches by five and a half inches. And since it's that size, we want to have a background piece that is exactly that same size. So just put your background piece right side up, and this piece goes right sides together to it. Now, fits pretty good. Now I want to stitch on the line right from here, zip it right around, and sew on the second line. And the easiest foot to use right now is your applique foot. So I'm just going to pop off my quarter inch foot. Love that quarter of an inch. But right now I want to use the open toe on my applique so I can see those stitches. Just snap that in there. Okay, drop the foot. There's a little arrow right on um, the foot. So I'm just going to line that up, line up the corner of this, hold my stitches, and actually stitch on that line. And as you're coming into the seams, hold your use your stiletto to hold those seams down so you can stitch right across that corner. And this should go right down into the opposite corner of the patch. Down at that end, raise your presser foot, zip it right around, and sew on the second line. Hold it right here. This gets a little bulky right here. You want to make sure you hold that flat. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Looking good. Hey, those stitches went on the lines right along here and here. And you can check from the right side, and you'll know if you're doing good or not there. Got that point right up to the background, looking good, checking the other side. Because if that's not happening, your patch isn't going to look right in the end. Looking good. Okay, once your stitching is done, then just take a ruler and cut in the middle. Now, there's actually more than a quarter inch seam in between the two of these, but that's okay. If you want, you can do a, a little extra trimming. But cut them in half. That's where the two patches come out. Now, it looks like we've been making half square triangles, but it's all stripped. Okay, turn it over with the background on the top. Set that seam open and press so that the seam is right behind the background. Let's do the second one. Two patches out of one set of strips. It is a miracle. Now, all that's left to do with the patches is just go ahead, trim off those tips, get rid of them. Chances are good that you don't need to square this patch up. It should be approximately four and a half inches, and it's ready to go into the block. Let me finish my other colors and I'll show you how to sew them together. There are no half square triangles in this patch. It is all just strips. Too easy to do. 
I have all four done now. I've actually been sewing my blocks together, but I want to show you how to lay out the patches. Just work off of the center point right here and drop one from each one of the sets of fabrics down, and they just swirl right around the center, kind of create that pinwheel effect. Now, whenever you sew down vertical rows, they also lock together. That's the best part. You can just roll them, lock them right in here, flip this one right sides together, and we're just going to go straight down here. You know, did I tell you that it doesn't matter if you, if you store a lot of fabrics. You might just love to go out shopping, buy tons of fabric, store it in your closet, whatever. It doesn't matter if you do that because, you know, fabric really should age. You need to have it a long time before you use it up. And also, if you've got it in your closet, you live back east in cold winters, just think of the good insulation it's providing for you. Oh, just worked out. Buy as much as you want. Okay, I went straight down here. Now, when I open this up, we're just going to check the seams right here. And this is perfect. This is exactly what you want. Got a quarter inch right there, a quarter inch there. So the next time we go across, that's going to lock right in place. Okay, flip it right sides together. And at this seam, Press the top seam up, and underneath the bottom seam should also go down. And you can see in the stitches, I want to cross right there. You know, sometimes you like to go shopping in discount stores. Discount fabric stores because it seems like the price of the fabric is something you just can't resist. But I do want to warn you, it really pays to know your fabric stores get some really good fabric, even though a fabric in a discount store looks the same as something you might get in a quality quilt shop, that fabric was not finished with the same finishing process, nor does it have the same thread count. Well, ask me, I know. Remember those micro dots? Well, I bought all the micro dots except just one strip I was missing at a good fabric store. I put one in from just a discount store, and 20 years later, oh, you can tell which piece I bought at the discount store. Okay, let me look and see. Here it's crossing right there how you want it to, and right here in the back's looking good. Now we want to make this block lay really flat. So right here at this seam, right where I, continuing, I continuously stitch straight through, I'm going to cut that stitch and remove the three stitches that are going up and down. Let me see if I can get my stiletto. Oh, all right. Took out the three right there, turn it over on this side, and take out the three on the other side. Gosh, there's so many stitches, it's probably hard for you to see just which stitches I want you to remove. Okay, let me just flip that. I did the straight up and down stitches. Now you take your whole block, Lay it wrong side up, and in that center, you just lay it open. Your seams will go in opposite directions. Just mush that down. That's a good old Pennsylvania term. And when you mush it, you get another pinwheel right in the very center. And then from the right side, you can see a nice sharp point right in the middle. And all you need to do is just press those seams as they swirl around the center. And the wonderful part is that these seams will also lock together when you sew your whole top together. Now, there are two different positions that you place your blocks in when you're laying them out. Take your first block, let's take a focus on the yellow, on the left side, and then whenever you place the second block beside it, your yellow would be on the bottom right. You just keep on alternating between those two. Okay, let's do bottom right and top left. And you can see how that hourglass is starting to be formed. And you just continuously lay out those two arrangements. Let me see. It helps if you kind of step back and look at them. You can see them so much better once you get your blocks laid across, four across, and four down then all you need to do is just sew the vertical rows together, top to bottom, and then go across the other way, 
locky nose seams. Let me get my top sewn together. You go, fabric gal, and get this quilt done. Well, it was easy to sew the blocks together, and then I decided I would add a stripe for the border instead of that large-scale floral. There are so many nice stripes that go with those floral prints. This is my favorite one. Now, this is the painting that we started out with, with the tulips and the large flowers and the small-scale flowers, and then the resulting stripe is this one. It has the same tulips, the flowers, but look at the stripe. The distance in between these two lines is exactly one half inch, so you can just cut right down through the middle and not waste a thing. Look at this. Over here on the salvage edge, this is all that you have to trim off. But before you trim it off, make sure you take a look at these little color dots because these will help you select other fabrics in these colors to go with the stripe. Hardly any waste on this at all. A little bit over here. Just cut those stripes. Easy to do. Well, that's the first stripe I designed. Now, this is the painting from the second one, the rainbow floral line. And whenever we looked at this stripe, we thought that maybe these little wiggly lines were just rough draft from the artist until we found out that's what was planned. And we said, oh my gosh, no, that won't work. Quilters have to have these nice straight lines. And so this is the stripe that resulted. In this piece, you can get a wide stripe and cut it right here through that half inch, or you could do a narrow stripe like this, separate, or just one old big piece together. Well, when you cut your stripe, you just put your line right along here. You put your quarter inch line on the stripe and just cut through. And what I like to do is just go right through, cut all of this, and then move it, and that's your piece. Well, whenever you sew your um, stripes on, you want to follow the lines and miter the corners because you've got that stripe. Let me show you what this piece looks like right here. S you have to allow extra on the end, at least the width of the stripe, plus another inch or so, a little extra, and you just place it right sides together and start exactly one-fourth inch in, and both of those are loose, that one-fourth inch. And then whenever I'm ready to finish the miter, all I do is lay it out on my ironing board and lay one stripe out going like this and take the second one and fold it under at the angle and just line up those stripes. Crease that and then all you need to do is just fold it back and sew on that crease. It works really well. well whenever you lay out your stripe, make sure to plan so you don't cut that large flower right down through the middle. The way I have it placed, that large flower is starting about an inch in on both sides. That way, you don't have so much distraction in the corners. Well, this is going to turn out to be a really cute quilt. I have a few more quilts to show you. You can never have too much fabric on hand. It keeps without refrigeration. It's not immoral, illegal, or fattening. But just think how good it makes you feel. Well, I made this fabric gal quilt out of fabrics from my stash. Well, I additioned each fabric on my design wall before putting it into this bright quilt. You know, the border came about because it was the largest piece of fabric I had. And then I finished it simply with Stitch in the Ditch quilting. Very bright, very fun. Well, Lois Bresloff made this beautiful, bright laugh road with a solid black background, and it's just so festive. For an even brighter finish, she quilted with this variegated thread in diagonal lines. And I just love this wide yellow border with the wavy quilting lines. You know, she evenly spaced the stitching with the guide on her walking foot. Well, Lois comes into our shop often, and she buys a lot of fabric. Well, she says she's stashing it because her husband is going to retire soon, and he will probably shop with her. Boy, she better get a stash together. Well, Sue Bouchard made a very soft fabric gal. It's softer colors, and it's soft flannel. 
She made it for her little granddaughter. It's just so sweet. There's plaids and flowers and stripes in the blocks. And then the border is a picture fabric. Well, Sue carefully planned it so everything can be seen right side up. Well, this is Sue's signature backing. She pieces absolutely everything that's left over from the front. That way, she has no scraps and she starts off fresh every time. Well, you know the old cliches. Quilting is less expensive than a psychiatrist. It keeps the economy going. Well, the one who dies with the most fabric wins. So who's it gonna be? You or me?